The electron configurations of the transition metals and their cations give us insight into properties, right? We can think about things like the shell number to talk about atomic size. And this is why electron configuration is important in general. This is important for the main group as well. And a key point to touch on with the transition metal cations in particular is that their electron configurations contain only D or F electrons in the case of the lanthanides or actinides. And the reasons for this are a little bit deeper than you'll often get if you just sort of get the cursory explanation that, oh, the S electrons are lost first, quote unquote. This is sort of an inaccurate way to talk about what's going on. And so here we're going to dig into the actual reasons why transition metal cations contain only D electrons. So here's essentially the setup. In a neutral transition metal atom in, say, the fourth period, the first row of the transition metal series, we've got generally two 4s electrons, the 4s subshell is filled, and we've got some number of 3d electrons, and a matching number of protons to the total number of electrons in the atom, right, because we start with a neutral atom. When we remove an electron, when we remove an electron from the atom to increase the positive charge felt by all the electrons, this will pull all of those negatively charged electrons closer to the nucleus. And the smaller the orbital is, the more strongly those electrons get pulled in. If you look at the sizes of the 3d and 4s orbitals, what we find is that the 3d orbital is smaller than the 4s orbital. That on average, electrons are farther away from the nucleus in the 4s orbital than the 3d orbital. Another way to put this is that the 3d orbital is less diffuse than the 4s orbital less sort of spread out. And the 4s orbital is more diffuse, more spread out. So when we remove an electron and introduce positive charge into the now ion, all of the electrons get pulled in and the 3d electrons get pulled in to a greater degree than the 4s electrons. This causes the 3d electrons to become more stable, lower in energy than the 4s electrons in the cation, right? And so just to get a sense of how this works, let's consider the case of, of titanium to see why titanium 2's electron configuration is 3d2, not 4s2. So we start with a neutral titanium atom. Now titanium is in group 4. Yes, it's right there. So it's going to have four valence electrons when neutral. Two of those will be 4s electrons and two of those will be 3d electrons. And we've seen in previous discussions of electron configuration that the 3d electrons are higher in energy than the 4s in the neutral titanium atom. When we lose two electrons, because of this effect on the orbital energies, with the 3d orbitals becoming lower in energy than the 4s, well now the two remaining electrons would prefer to occupy the 3d orbitals, which are now lower in energy in the cation. So the electron configuration of Ti2 plus is 3d2. A similar thing happens in the F block. When electrons are lost from the atom to produce a cation, the S electrons become higher in energy than the, uh, the S orbitals rather become higher in energy than the F orbitals, or the F orbitals become lower in energy than the S orbitals. And so the F block metal cations contain only F valence electrons. Sort of applying this idea as a rule makes it relatively easy to write electron configurations for transition metal cations because we just need to lose the appropriate number of electrons from the neutral number based on the periodic table and the given charge of the cation and then throw all the remaining valence electrons into either a D or an F subshell with the principal quantum number corresponding to the appropriate you know, row on the periodic table. For example, if we're in period four, it's the 3D subshell. Period five, it's the 4D subshell, so on and so forth. Here we're gonna practice writing electron configurations for transition metals, lanthanides, and actinides based on the identity of the element and the charge. These are all actually transition metal lanthanide or actinide cations, and the key with cations the sort of rule, quote unquote, is that we want to lose, quote unquote, the S electrons before the D or F electrons and put all the valence electrons in the cation into a D or F subshell. But before we apply that, we first need to ascertain how many valence electrons we would expect in the neutral element and then in the cation based on its charge. So for example, starting with cerium-3, 
CE3+. If we look at the periodic table and the location of cerium on the periodic table, it is in the fourth position relative to the corresponding noble gas, which is xenon, is the closest noble gas to the left. We've got one, two, three, and four valence electrons in the neutral atom. So cerium-3, cerium-3+, plus has one, two, three. We step back to cesium. It has one valence electron, cerium-3+. plus. So the electron configuration corresponding to this we might be tempted to say, oh, well, that's going to be the same electron configuration as, let's say, a cesium atom here, so something like 6s1. But remember, in, this, in these lanthanide cations, the 6s orbital is higher in energy than the 4f orbital. So the one remaining valence electron in cerium 3 plus is located in the 4f orbital. So an abbreviated electron configuration here is xenon 4f1 lose those s electrons before the d or in this case f electrons the one remaining valence electron goes in a 4f orbital lead 2 lead is actually a main group element and so it has a full 5d and 4f subshell let's look at the periodic table to verify this so lead is actually in group 14 it's right here losing two electrons takes it back to mercury and it's got a full subshell that is, the 4D subshell is, is entirely full. It's also got a full, uh, sorry, a full 3D subshell. It's also got a full 4F subshell. Let me make sure that's, I said that right. A full 5D subshell and a full 4F subshell. And those two valence electrons are lost from the P subshell. So the electron configuration here is that of xenon. 6s2, 5d10, 4f14. Let's go back to the periodic table to verify this. So if we start at xenon. We've got 6s2. We've got that entire 4f14, and this may be listed next or at the end as we've done it. Either way is fine, as far as I'm concerned. And then we have a full 5d subshell, which is all of these electrons. Whoop, all of these electrons. And that's actually it, right? Pb2 plus. We don't have any electrons remaining in the P subshell. So that's lead. Lead is actually a main group element, but its electron configuration is equivalent to actually the nearest post-transition metal, with which, if my memory serves me right, is mercury. Yes, electron configuration is equivalent to that of mercury. Okay, Ti2+. We looked at this one in detail. Ti2 plus has two valence electrons remaining. Both of those will be found in the D subshell for that element, which is the, the valence D subshell, which is 3D. And so the configuration will be that of argon 3D2. Americium is the fourth example here. Now, americium is an actinide, I believe. And so let's zoom in and find it on the periodic table. Yes, it's right here. And when neutral, we have... If we start at francium, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine valence electrons. And so americium three plus is going to have, let's see, eight, seven, six valence electrons. And because we're looking at, a, at an actinide or transition metal cation here, this is going to contain all of its valence electrons in an F subshell because it's an actinide and so we'll have all six of those electrons in the valence subshell the valence f subshell for americium which is 5f so it's radon which is the closest noble gas 5f6 and then finally palladium 2 plus palladium is a transition metal in the second row of the transition series and when neutral it has 10 valence electrons this is an element that i know well one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten so ten valence electrons when neutral eight when it exists as a two plus cation and those eight electrons are all found in the 4d subshell so the configuration here is that of krypton 4d8 so notice that in all of these cations, the only valence electrons we have, all the transition metal cations, are in either D or F 
orbitals. And lead is a little bit out of place. Lead is a main group element, but its cation dips into the transition series in a sense in that the electron configuration is equivalent to that of neutral mercury, right, with 6s2, 5d10, 4f14.